I just bought this car. It was running and driving. Not anymore. The guy that sold me this car, drove this car 50 miles here. I paid him $4,600 cash for this car. I take it around the block for a test drive one time, one time around the block, and the clutch craps out on me. Ah, it's got no clutch pedal. My car buying skills are not what they used to be. Oh man. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> Whew. Uh, oh, wow. This car may not move under its own power, but it sure as hell looks good. That's original paint, if you can believe it. Yeah, there's a few little scratches, and the clear coat's lifting up a little bit here and there. But from 10 feet away, this car looks like a million bucks. But that's not why I bought it. What sold me on this car is what's under the hood. That is a supercharger, capable of increasing engine performance by an extra 175 horsepower. And those are not cheap, which makes this $4,600 buy look like the deal of the century. But here's the thing, besides the clutch pedal not working so well, when you fire this car up, it has uh, a bit of a noise. Take a listen. That's an unhealthy noise. And it's coming from the front in perfect rhythm with the motor, which usually means you've got motor problems and it could cost thousands of dollars in repairs. But there's another part in the front that moves in sync with the motor and it doesn't cost thousands of dollars to repair and that's the drive shaft. Let me show you. This is what a Corvette looks like without a body. And you may have noticed, this doesn't look like your normal drivetrain. Most rear wheel drive cars have the engine followed by the transmission, drive shaft, and differential. But in 1997, Corvette changed all of that. They took the transmission that was previously connected to the motor and then they moved it to the back and made it to the differential and called it a transaxle. They needed something to connect the transaxle to the motor. So they came up with this, a torque tube. And inside the torque tube is this drive shaft, properly known as the propeller shaft. And this shaft goes right into the back of the motor and spins at the same RPM rate as the motor, which makes it very difficult to diagnose any mechanical noise that's coming from this area. The same area where the noise is coming out of my car. And that noise is why I got that car so cheap. The guy I got the car from thinks that the noise is coming from here, which could cost thousands of dollars to repair. But I'm gambling on the fact that the noise is coming from here, which would be the shaft. And that's cheap to fix because what normally goes wrong with the shaft 
is these two couplers here. They're made out of rubber and fiber, and over time, the rubber cracks and makes the shaft wobble to the point that it hits the inside of the tube. And that causes a god-awful noise, much like the noise that's coming out of my car. Although the parts are cheap, to remove the shaft is a very labor-intensive job. Everything from the torque tube back has to be removed from the car. The transaxle, the complete rear suspension, all has to come down and away from the car just to get this tube out of the back of the motor. Now that the talking's all done, all I've got left to do is work. All right, all the suspension bolts are off. The only thing holding up the transaxle and the rear suspension is my jack. All right, there it is, finally. The torque tube. All right, moment of truth. It all comes down to this. If I open up this torque tube and nothing is wrong with it, that means my motor's junk and it's gonna cost me thousands. What the hell? You coming? What? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. It's destroyed. It's in, it's in pieces. Oh, 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 oh. oh my God, it's, the rubber couplers have been disintegrated. That's supposed to be rubber. It turned into black powder. This is supposed to be all one piece in here and this is supposed to be a rubber coupler and it's, it's virtually disintegrated. There's no, I don't even know how, how this guy made it here with this. It's in pieces in here. Oh my God. <laughs> <It's> holy. <laughs> there it is. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. Oh my, oh my. This is good though. I've never been so happy to see something so destroyed. This was making some noise. Oh my God. Oh. Oh my. This coupler is better than the other coupler, but wow. That is destroyed. That's supposed to be a rubber coupler. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at there's aluminum in here. You gotta be kidding me. Now that is a destroyed torque tube. This was definitely making noise. I've been wrong before. I didn't want to be wrong here. Oh <laughs> man, this is bad. Oh my God. It's in pieces. This is supposed to be all one piece and this is supposed to be connected here like this one is and wow is that bad. Oh you can see where it was hitting here. Well you can see, you can see the chunks of aluminum in here. Man, that was getting beat to hell. Oh wow. <laughs> you know what this means? This means I'm saving thousands of dollars in engine repair. Oh, I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot.
Yeah! Woohoo! <laughs> yeah! Now that I've had a bit of time to assess the damage, I can better explain what was going on here. Clearly, this rear coupler was the main problem, or should I say, lack of a rear coupler. But wait, I said the noise was coming from here. The rear coupler is like five feet away from where the noise was. Makes you wonder, did I screw up? Did I misdiagnose the problem? Do I still have a noise in my motor? No, no, and I sure as hell hope not. You see, the noise had more to do with this bearing than it did with this coupler. Once this coupler wasn't holding the shaft in place, the shaft moved forward and pressed out this bearing that normally keeps the front of the shaft in place. Once that bearing was out of its seat, the front of this shaft was flopping around and beating the crap out of the inside of the tube. Not only that, it was flopping around so bad that it damaged the slave cylinder that goes on the front of the torque tube. And the slave cylinder is what controls the clutch. So when I took that initial test drive and the clutch gave out on me, that gave me a bit of an indication that the issue was probably gonna be torque tube related. So now that we know this was a problem, does that mean my motor's gonna be perfect with no bad noises? No, but it sure makes my odds a whole hell of a lot better. In fact, I'm feeling so good about that motor, I'm not even gonna try and rebuild the old torque tube. Instead, I'm gonna install this upgraded one to help handle the extra horsepower that this engine's putting out. on and the exhaust is buttoned up you know what that means it's time to fire this motor up and see what I've got I'm confident that the motor is gonna be good but until you fire it up you just never know don't let me down honey sounding pretty good That is nice. That sounds really good. I wasn't able to rev it up like this before because it sounded like it was coming apart. Oh. <laughs> that sounds good. Now that's what a motor is supposed to sound like. Oh my God, that sounds better than I expected it to sound. That's the first time I really revved this motor up. Oh, oh. that sounds, <laughs> that's bad, that's ridiculous. I know it has a supercharger, but that's ridiculous. Oh my. <laughs> That's really good. That That sounds amazing. <laughs> All right, I got to put the wheels on this thing and take it for a real test drive. That involves me not pushing the car. Railroad 
drag. So now we're gonna find out how good of a car I've got here. When I bought this car, it was a full-on gamble because I couldn't test everything with that overpowering torque tube noise. Yeah, I knew the guy drove this car 50 miles prior to selling it to me, so I figured all the mechanical stuff was working, I just didn't know how well. Now I can properly test it, listening for any kind of sound that may indicate an upcoming problem. Like bearings that howl when they start to go bad. Yeah, and right now, I'm liking the noises coming out of this car. Or should I say, lack of noises. Yeah, the suspension is nice and quiet, the transaxle is smooth, and the motor, that's the most surprising thing. The motor is powerful. I mean, really powerful. I've had other C5s that had this exact same supercharger, and they are not nearly as fast as this car. Watch how fast the speedometer rises when I put my foot into this. This car's a rocket! When the guy sold me this car, he didn't bring me the records or any receipts of the work that he had done to it, but he did say that he put it in the mail to me later. He never did, and now it seems I can't get in contact with the guy. If I would have known that there was a monster under this hood, I would have asked a whole lot more questions when I was buying this thing. So now I'm underneath here checking the numbers on the motor and trying to decipher what I've got in here. This is the part where I pretend to be a detective and figure out what's making all this horsepower. This is an original stock LS1 intake. These are stock LS1 heads and underneath is the stock LS1 oil pan. So by looks, you would think that this would be the original LS1 that originally came with this car new. But by looking at the numbers that I found on this motor makes me think otherwise. You see, all new cars come with a motor that's stamped with a matching VIN number. And on these Corvette LS motors, they're all stamped right here in this location, just like this one is. But this motor doesn't have a VIN number stamped on it whatsoever, which tells me two things. One, this is not the original motor from this car. And two, it's not a used motor from another car. Otherwise, it'd have a different VIN number stamped on it. It has nothing on it, which means it was bought brand new from GM which is a bonus because this car has 100,000 miles on it. I didn't want it to be the original motor, nor did I want it to be another motor from another car. So if it's not an original LS1, what is it? The only way to tell what this motor is when it's in the car is by a cast number that's stamped on the back of the block. It's right here on the back of the block and it's nearly impossible to see when the motor's in the car. The only way to read that number is from underneath the car where you fish up an extendable mirror, push away the wires, and then hit it with the flashlight. It's ridiculously hard to do, but possible because I just read the casting numbers off this block and drum roll please. The casting numbers on this motor are 12568952, which makes it an LS2 motor, the newer, bigger motor. This car originally came with an LS1 that was a 5.7 liter motor with only 350 horsepower. The LS2 is a six liter motor with 400 horsepower. Combined with the supercharger, we're looking at 550 to 575 horsepower, which is not too shabby. 
but I have a feeling that this new LS2 is a built motor that has more horsepower than a stock LS2. But I don't know for sure because to be honest with you, I've never had a car this fast. And I don't know if this car has 600 horsepower or 650. But I do know a guy that can tell me exactly how much horsepower this car has, and that's my buddy Harry. He has a dyno shop not far from here, and that's where I'm headed right now. This is a car I just got. Oh, yes? I don't know much about it, and it's nice to get a lot of knowledge. You find out what's really in there. When I was test driving it on the street, the seat of my pants could of only pan. tell me so much. Right. So and then on the, it's a little more technical uh, I, here. Of course, of course. This is controlled environment. You're not spinning tire from one run on the street versus, you know, like to the second. Yeah. And, oh, did we get better? Oh, did yeah. this is here consistent. You're doing the same thing exactly. from 2,500 RPM to 6,500 RPM. But I I'm do revving. like spinning tires, so that's oh. another story. <laughs> and are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready All to right, go. go. All right. This half here, if you see how smooth it is, yeah. the smoother the better. Usually oh. you see jagged like this, that's yeah. not good. This is very nice and it could be improved a little bit more, you know, when it gets Even to more? It. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. But right now, from what you see, it's like a conservative tune. Right, yeah. Because I don't know anything about this car. Uh -huh. I bought it like it is. So what you're seeing is what I got. That's why I'm bringing it to you. I hear you. Because you're going to tell me what I've got going on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another pull. I'm going to see how consistent the run is. This one here was better than the first run. Yeah. So we made an improvement from the first pull. So now we're up. The second pull was even better. We're going to do one more pull. Yes. You we're think we'll get any more, more out of it? I would say that. Is your uh, right? Is your right foot getting a little heavier every time? Or? Uh, it is. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. One more go at this. Okay, Harry, that one went even better. Yes. It looks like we got a little bit extra out of that yes. one, huh? So, what we learned today is that we did number one pull, then we did the number two and the number three for solid baseline. And on each run, we made more power and more power. 
and we love uh, more power. Yes. Now that that's some pretty cheap gas. That's pump gas. It's yes. 91 pump gas, but today's California pump gas has a lot, lot of ethanol on it. Uh, yeah. We need something like this at least minimum, bare minimum, 93 octane. And you heard a little pinging. I yes, heard a little at the pinging. Beginning, uh huh. So this car's got a little more in it. If of we've course. Got a little better gasoline, actually a little better tune. Exactly. So Six. what did we what did we start out our first pull? What did you end up with? We started with 576, mm -hmm. and uh, we ended up with 580, but that wasn't, the peak numbers wasn't only the thing. The area under the curve where we were making more power every run. Oh, okay. That was the difference that from the first pull to the last pull. That was rear wheel horse. Yes. So you figure... Is On a manual transmission, you know, you figure at least 20% drivetrain loss so let's do the math all right so right. if we're talking about um, 580 to the rear wheel 580 to the rear wheel so 580 to the rear wheel i'm adding 20 percent on there for you that yeah. will be 116 plus equal that's 696, 696. flywheel six that's to, pretty impressive right. that's rounded up at 700 horsepower wow 700 horsepower exactly <laughs> I knew this car had a little bit extra in it. I got this car and I knew nothing about it. It looked like a totally stock motor with a supercharger on it. Once I got the torque tube good and I could rev it up, right. I knew you could tell you could tell a this fast a car when you rev it up right. and you go, this is not stock. When I took it out for a ride on the street, I says, I gotta bring it over to Harry and find out what kind of horsepower this thing's oh, got. Definitely. So you're, you're talking pretty much 700 horsepower. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> Today's uh, results have been established that you have 700 flywheel horsepower, 580 to the rear wheel. That's pretty impressive, huh? That's very good. You and you came in here, you didn't have any clue where you're standing. Because did, you uh, did you have to bring that up that I'm clueless? <laughs> My ass knows when I'm in the seat, I knew that it had a lot of horsepower, I just didn't know how much. You got the birth certificate right now, Ooh, here you go. Oh, nice, nice, that's impressive. Official Dynojet uh, evaluation program and uh, everything's official for you, there you go. There it is. I survived, the car survived. <laughs> Thanks again, Harry. Okay. I appreciate it. Much this appreciated to see Harry you here, from too. from HK Motorsports, and uh, he let me know what the hell is going on. Glad to have you over here today. Thanks, Harry. All right. I took a gamble buying a god-awful noisy car that couldn't even move under its own power and I got luckier than I ever could have imagined. My payoff was a 700 horsepower rocket. But we're not done yet with this car because this doesn't look like a 700 horsepower speed demon. It looks like a bone stock original 350 horsepower Corvette. And we gotta change that, which means it's time to do some real work. Anybody that turns a wrench could have got this car running down the road. But to customize and bring the body to life, that's another story. And that's my jam. I mean, that's what I do. I grew up in a body shop, so that's the kind of work that I do best. And what I'm wanting to do here is turn this base model coupe into a one-of-a-kind speedster. Let me show you what I'm thinking. This is the look I'm going for. It's not a coupe, but it's not a convertible. It's what you call a speedster, and it totally matches the vibe of this car. But this is just the start. When you come back, we're gonna build this out and make it not only unique, but super freaking cool too. And you can also help by leaving suggestions in the comments as to what other body mods would go good with the theme here. And hey, if you like the video, subscribe. Maybe even hit the like button. Ah, oh, that's asking too much. <laughs> I got carried away there. Got carried away for a minute. We'll see you next video.